Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. I certainly hope you all are blessed. And I hope you're living your best lives. Living your best lives free. And what do I mean by that? Well, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And the scriptures read, if the sun therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And what am I referring to? <laughs> I'm referring to the Son of the Most High God. I'm referring to Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. Uh, he is the only one that can save us. He is the only one that can redeem us. And he is certainly the only one that can set us free. He set me free, y'all. Uh, I am on that pathway uh, trying to make it to eternity, to eternal life with the Most High God. And he is setting me free on my walk with him. And um, I'm here just to inspire you. And I welcome you uh, to the second part of a video series that I'm doing about where all religions come from. And um, it's a real in-depth study uh, for those of you who are interested in this type of thing. I, it fascinates me. Um, I love history and I love to uh, delve deep into where uh, the source of all things are from. And I certainly love studying the Bible and um, I like to do a lot of uh, research with other types of texts and resources that add commentary, <laughs> that add commentary to our Bible. And so this is one of the studies that um, I've been quite interested in. And so we're going to get, you know, into that. Oh, uh, we're going to get into that right after this. Down below, uh, it's a website. I don't know if it's going to be over here, over here. It's going to be somewhere down. So, JulesbyLavon.com. You're going to find some really fashionable, trendy, chic, and retro jewelry. Um, they're building the website for men as well. They're working on that. So men, you'll find some good stone bracelets and things of that nature. Watches, women, uh, earrings, necklaces, uh, stack rings, all kinds of trendy stuff. A lot of people like the stone beads. They like to stack them. You get all kinds of bracelets and stuff like that. More merchandise. So if you like quality metals and um, gold and silver and stone, natural stones, if you like quality fashion jewelry, then uh, JulesByLavon.com is where you want to go. Again, they're sponsoring this video. And um, please support because it does help this channel when you do that. Hey, y'all. I want you to check these out. You see these earrings? Um, yeah, these are from Jules by Levon, y'all. I've had these for two years. This is what I call my around the way, uh, you know, hoochie mama earrings. I love these earrings. Um, I like to switch it up a bit. Sometimes I wear the big earrings. And then sometimes I like to be a bit more conservative and I'll wear my studs or things of that nature. And um, so I really appreciate you watching that commercial for Jewels by Levon because it helps my channel if you go over there and purchase some things. Not yet. Watch your YouTube videos first. Don't go over there right away. <laughs> uh, but once you're done, go check them out. Uh, anything that you purchase uh, will support this channel. Um, these are cute. Again, they're like my large hoop around the way earrings. And um, if you can see, they have these little details here with um, butterflies and, uh, you know, little crystal accents there. Um, I've had these over a year. Good quality manufacturing. Good quality metals. Um, they're not going to tarnish on you. They're not going to change on you. We're talking about fashion jewelry. Uh, what they used to call back in the day costume jewelry. And it's okay to wear those things. Now you can wear your Cartier and your Tiffany. Um, but these days, you wear any of that stuff out, you might get jacked for them. So <laughs> you might want to switch to some fashion or costume jewelry. Um, might save your life or save you a few dollars. <laughs> um, but they're, again, well-made. Um, I like them. I feel like I have good taste. These here as well. Um, these are another set of earrings, uh, little gold hoops. They're smaller, but kind of bigger, um, bolder look, uh, if you can see them. Um, very nice. 
$9.99, y'all. $9.99, and you can't beat that price. A lot of other things on that site as well, so go check them out. Um, handbags, sunglasses, things for men. Uh, check them out. They're building the website, and um, that's enough about that. <laughs> Also, I want to say to all of my return viewers, my subscribers, uh, I really thank you for tuning in uh, to my channel and supporting my channel. I appreciate you all. I love you so much. Um, I love your comments and I really appreciate your support. Uh, to those of you who are new to this channel, why don't you subscribe? <laughs> what are you waiting for? It's free and it helps my channel to grow. Uh, what I like to do here is just share uh positive inspiration and motivation for any of those who are in need, a word of hope. And um, that's what you're going to get on this channel. Nothing but positivity. Okay, so we're going to start in part two. If you haven't seen part one of this series, Where Do All Religions Come From? Um, be sure to check it out. The description link is in the uh, uh, the link is the video link is in the description box below, and um, also there's some other neat details in the description box. Um, my email address is there. If you have a prayer request or have any questions, um, my email is there as well. Um, okay, so let's get started. What I'm going to do is read my notes um, because if I don't read my notes, y'all. I will delve off onto other tangents and I will never get the point across um, that I'm trying to make. So if I'm looking down, it's because I'm reading my notes. It's a lot of details and research, so um, I want to make sure I stay focused, okay? Um, so let's begin. Now, the reason I think this topic is important to Christians or those who follow Jesus Christ is because we need to enlighten ourselves and dispel the myths when it comes to um, what we believe and who we believe in, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and the Word of God, the Bible. We have to defend the faith, y'all, and that's what I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to do. In part one, I talked about the reason I created this series, partly due to my Bible study in Exodus 32, where the children of Israel got restless waiting for Moses um, to come down from the mount. And um, because they got so restless, they asked Aaron uh, to make themselves a god. A, and, um, and so he made a calf. Um, and so while Moses was gone up on Mount Sinai talking to God, um, he would later come down with the Ten Commandments. Uh, the children of Israel got restless and wanted a God. Hmm. So um, that made me think, you know, like, my gosh, <laughs> you know, the Lord is leading you guys directly, showing you miracles and things of that nature, but yet you still are looking for uh, something else, something else in the spiritual realm Um in order to be satisfied. So that made me think. And there there was also another reason why I did this video series because I received an email and um, it was from one of the viewers and they asked the question about um, her father. Um, he didn't want her to visit her friend's Christian church because he feels that Christianity is false and because it is a white man's religion. Um, now, to any of you who are not um, black or it, uh, any other race, um, this video is for you to watch. Just stay informed. I'm not being um, it, exclusive to any color. Um, I want all Christians to watch this because um, it is some th good information that you will be able to take value from. So I challenged both of those statements um, from the e email um, that Christianity is false and that it's a white man's religion. Now, Christianity is a white man's religion and Christianity is false, which is a common thing amongst popular anti-Christ religions. Um, and there are more, but I focused on um, three in the black community. Uh, the Hebrew Israelites, the Nation of Islam, and the Egyptian Hotep religion. Many Christians um, have joined these groups. They were converted over to them because of these beliefs. Um, many 
folk uh, believe that Christianity is false and that it is the white man's religion. And so they're leaving Christianity and going over to um, some of these religions. And I talked about how Christianity was misrepresented by those who were missionaries during colonization and how these men of power used Christianity in order to subdue nations and colonize the world. Even though these folk may have misrepresented Christianity, it does not mean they created Christianity. And I went further to challenge topics going across the board. We have to learn how to separate those people who misrepresent Christianity from Christianity itself. Just because these people over here are foolishly manipulating others and trying to use God to do it, does not mean the message of God is wrong. Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Now, I went further to reveal where Christianity began, and the Bible tells us that they were first called Christians at Antioch, and Antioch is uh, a region uh, today um, where it's near modern-day Turkey. Um, and in Acts 11 and 26, it refers to the disciples who went out to uh, preach Jesus Christ to both the Jews and Gentiles during the first century. And this is where the term Christianity first came from, tells us this in the Bible at Antioch. Uh, so just dispelling the myth as to where Christianity really began, it did not begin with Roman Catholicism or with the uh, European colonizations of the world and the missionaries going out. Christianity did not begin at that time. It began back at the first century when the disciples went out uh, to preach the gospel um, to the world. Um, and then the second statement, Christianity is false. I gave a couple of examples as to why uh, some of these groups um, say that Christianity is false. Um, some of the stories in the Bible, they say, are not real, such as the flood. Um, they also say that Jesus Christ was made up and that um, these stories were created based on ancient religions. And because these ancient religions took place prior in history to when these events took place in the Bible, then of course they say that the Bible has to be false and that uh, it's most likely stolen from these ancient texts or scripts. I also, going into depth with these ancient religions and civilizations, we um, see this theme of the Trinity, of this sun god trinity archetype. Um, and I also went over uh, some of these civilizations and so I uh, went further back into the first civilization, which is ancient uh, Sumeria. Um, but then also we start seeing this sun god trinity archetype uh, further uh, down in history where we see ancient Babylon, um, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Hindu civilizations. They take on this sun god trinity archetype. And so I discussed that a bit further as well. So if yet again, if you haven't seen part one, make sure you tune in um, so that you can get that um, background and foundation. Today, I want to dig a little further into the statement that Christianity is false and that our Bible is based on the accounts of ancient civilization texts. And I'll also answer the question, where do all religions come from? Now, in part three, which will be the next video, so stay tuned for that, tune in to your notifications for that, um, I'm going to dig a little deeper. I'm going to bring everything together so that we can get a clearer understanding of the intent, the intent behind these groups and the attacks against Christianity and Jesus Christ specifically. Now, I do want to read a disclaimer. Um, now, this message is extremely exclusive for those who have an ear. Um, it is for those who are Christian and followers of Jesus Christ. 
those who follow Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. This message is for you. I don't care what color of skin you are. This message is for you, okay? I'm not here to argue a point and or I'm not here to challenge those who are not believers of Jesus Christ. Now, you're welcome to listen, but I'm not here to debate with you. Um, the reason I say this is because when you talk about things like this, it invites the trolls, y'all. The trolls come a running. And so um, a lot of times you may not see comments, but there are views based on my analytics. Um, analytics. Their people are watching. Um, they're just not commenting. But often when I make um, statements or make videos that may be a bit more controversial, um, I do get comments and I have to block them. And they're tend to be negative comments. The trolls come running, y'all. And so these comments, um, they'll like, you know, say things like um, God was created out of people's minds and, you know, they'll tell you different things that are based on their opinions. Um, and I'm okay with that. I, I'm not here for everyone to agree, but put some facts on that. Put some research on that. Don't just make blanket comments just because you want to be uh, disrespectful for those who believe in Christ. Um, and I believe that that anti-Christ spirit is out there. Um, so whenever a Christian comes out and defends the faith, maybe talks about things that are a bit more in-depth than the regular, um, the fact that Jesus is going to give you a bunch of money and give you prosperity. Whenever someone gets a bit more in-depth about um, reasons as to why folk are downing our religion, uh, you get the trolls come in with these different um, comments. And these comments are distracting. They're distracting to other viewers and those who really want to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So I'm not here to debate with y'all. If you got some negative comments to say, back it up with facts. Don't just make some blanket statements to where you want to offend someone. And then a lot of times when you go to their YouTube site, you click on their ID and go to their YouTube site, it's not even a real YouTube channel. So these are fake people creating YouTube channels just so they can go to someone's channel um, to make these types of silly comments. And so I just block them, present information. Um, a lot of this information are based on things that I research and my opinions. And if you don't agree, you don't agree. Um, but, but if you're going to make some comments like that, back them up, put some truth in there. I'm giving you some research and study and Bible scriptures to back up what I'm saying. And um, have a real por portfolio and, and also present yourself with a real portfolio, not a fake uh, YouTube site. So you can go around making negative comments on people's uh, channels. So, okay. Now, with that being said, when talking about the spiritual realm, God also knew before he created Adam and Eve that they would eat the forbidden fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, he already knew that the serpent who is Satan or Lucifer, he already knew that Satan or that serpent would entice Eve, who would then convince Adam to eat of that fruit. Now, him knowing that, he also already set up a plan to redeem mankind. He knew that man would need a redeemer after the fall. And so when Adam ate of that fruit, sin nature, and so God knew that man would need a redeemer. Um, so he already predestined Jesus Christ, our Savior, uh, to come. He already predestined Jesus to come before we were ever created. He knew what man was going to do. He knew that man could not follow. Um, and so he already set up a way of escape for us. Now, we can also say that Satan, whose name is also Lucifer, was an angel in heaven. So um, he used to be a beautiful angel uh, who fell from grace because God found iniquity in him. And you can find this passage in Isaiah 14 chapters or verses 12 through 17. 
All of heaven was made aware of God's plan to create man. How man would fall from grace through Adam and Eve and that man would need a savior to redeem him from sin. So all heaven, all the angels, everything that was existed in heaven, they were all made privy to God's plan. Um, there are also some who believe that we, who are also eternal beings, um, were also there at that at, with him. I don't know if we were there at them. I don't know if they say we were there at them that time when he made a way of escape. Um, but they say that we were in his bosom, God's bosom, before we are actually created and manifested on this earth. Um, it's a very interesting study on that. Um, but that's a whole nother tangent and I'm going off of my notes and you see why I need my notes? Because I'll go there, y'all. <laughs> and there was a time when Satan, where God found iniquity in Satan um, and also those who wanted to follow Satan, which is a third of the angels in heaven. And uh, when God found out that there was iniquity found in him, um, he was immediately cast down to out of heaven. And this is where we find that in Isaiah. Okay, so now remember in the first part and further up in this video where I discussed the sun god trinity archetype when we're talking about these ancient civilizations and their religions. Well, many civilizations took on this sun god trinity archetype um, where this figure for their gods and their religions and um, Babylon was one of the first civilizations that took on this archetype uh, through Nimrod, uh, Semiramis, and Tammuz. Nimrod being the, the god father, Semiramis being the goddess mother, and Tammuz being the sun god. Now let's go to Genesis uh, chapter 11, 1 through 11. This is where we see the accounts and the story of Nimrod. Chapter 11 And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Now, now we believe, uh, again, that this Trinity archetype, sun god, religiosity, uh, it spread throughout the world. Um, once uh, God stopped and confounded the languages of those who were building that Tower of Babel. Um, once he confounded their languages and spread them um, throughout the world, this is where we believe that uh, different nations began and the different languages of those nations began and also um, the way uh, the different nations developed in their civilization, the way they uh, created their gods, a polytheistic uh, god system, um, the way they uh, developed that, uh, it came from Babel, okay? And we know that ancient Babylon, as we mentioned, was one of the first civilizations that had this trinity sun god archetype and so when the lord uh spread all of these men to the different nations throughout the world this same 
ideal uh, to create multiple gods. Um, it came from the culture of Babylon. And so, um, as we know in civilizations that came long after Babylon, this same archetype, this same Trinity theme has followed. And we believe as God confounded the languages at the Tower of Babel and sent the men abroad, they took this polytheistic belief system with them. And all of that began, um, this polytheistic belief system, um, all of that began in Mesopotamia with the Sumerian culture and, and this sun god, Trinity archetype, also came along in the Babylonian uh, uh, culture. And so when these men went away to different nations, they took this way of serving gods along with them. And that's why you see the majority of the religions are more polytheistic than uh, like Christianity, which is monotheistic. Um, Islam is monotheistic and uh, Judaism is monotheistic. Now the Hebrews who serve one God, um, a monotheistic approach, um, that began with Adam and Eve prior to the Sumerian civilization. So um, we have to know that we're talking about history here. Even though Samaria was the first civilization, it was not the first existence of mankind. That took place at the beginning in Genesis with Adam and Eve. And so prior to any civilization, because it was just Adam and Eve at the beginning until they had offspring. And so the Garden of Eden was believed to also be in that Mesopotamian region. And it, it said that it was in the southern region between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, which again, this is modern day Iraq, this land of Ur, uh, where we're referring to. Um, it said this is where the beginning came from. Now, later, Abraham, who is from Ur, again, we talked about that, God told him, to leave that region, if you can recall, and leave his people. And God made a covenant with Abraham that Abraham's seed would be his children and that God would be their God, okay? And so that's the covenant God made with Abraham and this seed, um, this existing seed today is who carries out the uh, message of God, the creator. So as we can see, all religions came from this region and uh, most polytheistic religions originated from Babylon. So to answer that question, there you have it. Okay, so this was a lot, y'all. <laughs> it was a lot today. Um, it was a lot on part one, um, but I am so glad that you joined me in this video. Make sure you tune in for part two. Turn on your notifications so that you'll know when um, that next video is coming. I have to get my research together and get prepared for that video as well. Um, but I am so glad that you're able to tune in with me and join me in this study. Um, I think it is raining out there, y'all. And I'm here in California where we have a really serious drought. Um, but there is some hurricane off the coast and it is causing rain all the way inland where I am. So I'm grateful for the rain and I'm grateful for you being here. I want to say thank you for stopping by. See you next time and God bless. <laughs>